I will show you a surprising strategy that I almost always use for Sudokus with the minimum amount of 17 starting digits. Not only will I use it to solve the green cell, but I'll also show you another strategy I often see that will help us solve the red cell. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Look here in block one, you see how this one comes down? At least the ones are going to be in two places here in block one. And this is called line rotation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a candidate. You mark it in case you solve one of these cells. We can solve the other one right away for a one. And this is also acts as a pointing pair. So since a one has to be in block seven, in column one, a one can't be anywhere else along the column. Because if you put a one right here, no place to put a one in block seven. And so with this one right here, we can actually mark the other ones up here in block one. And then in block six, you see how this one comes down. This one cuts across kind of through the gate that some solvers caught. That's another pointing pair. So ones can't be here. There's three possibilities for one here. I'm not going to mark that. So we're just trying to gain information you need. The strategy I'm going to show you kind of help create a little bit more breadth, a little bit more uh, uh, robustness to the 17 digit minimum grid Sudoku's. Greetings, friend. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. You're about to encounter our surprising strategy for the first time. But first, let's look at these twos. You see how this two cuts across right here? And this two comes down. Two possibilities for two in block nine. And since these are a pointing pair, two can't be anywhere else along here. This two is right here, and you got this two. There's only one place we can solve for two up there in block three. Nice job there. And then you cut across row four and coming up column two. There's two possibilities for two there, so it's another pointing pair. And with these twos, we can actually solve for two right here. And then let's look here in block four. All right, you notice how you had a two in column two. You also have a three in column two. You have a two in row four. You also have a three in row four. And this is leading up to that strategy that you're going to see all the time. The threes are limited, these two spots in block four. And it's the same two spots where the twos are limited. And whenever you see the situation where Snyder digits are on top of each other, that forms a hidden pair because it means a two and a three can only be in these two spots in the block. And so they're limited to those two cells. Nothing else can be in those cells. And the hidden pair gives us that robustness because now these two cells are accounted for with a two and a three. Let's use that to our advantage. Put these two, three here and this three and that three, uh, the Hidden pair actually acts as a pointing pair as well. Remember, it started as a pointing pair. There's only one place to put a three up here in block one. And now let's look at the fours. You got something else going on here with the fours. You got a one and a four cutting across row five. You have the one and the four here in block nine as well. Look at this. We're going to make another hidden pair because the ones and fours are limited to the same two cells. These hidden pairs are awesome because it just blocks up so much of the block right here. And it gives us some more opportunities to do some solving. And then with these th fours right here, they act as a pointing pair. There's only two possibilities for a four. If you saw this one four hidden pair, give me a thumbs up. Let's look now at block seven. There's something really cool here you're going to find. You have a one, two, three right here and a five. Okay, it's four digits looking in these cells. You also have a six and a seven right here. So that's six digits, and you have an eight and a nine in row eight. So two in the block, two in the row, two more in the row outside the block, and you have four outside the block in the column. Whenever you have eight different digits looking at one cell, you know that's a naked single. We can only put a four right here, right? It's the only thing that makes sense. And now with that, and this four, and this four, we can solve for a four right here. And this is gonna lead us to another very cool strategy. With these two fours, there's only two places for a four in block two. And now you might notice these fours are limited in blocks two and three, two rows two and three. And I'll color that. This 
is what I call mini X-Wing. All right, and since the force got to be either here and here or here and here in these two blocks, in block one, the four is going to be limited to the other row. It has to be along row three, right? Because a four can't be in row three here or here. And so if it was limited to these three cells, we call that a claiming triple. But since there's already four right here in these two cells, this is a claiming pair of fours. And so four can no longer be in any of these four spots. And this is going to help us tremendously as we lead up to that green cell. If you want to solve exclusive puzzle packs featuring strategies like claiming pairs, pointing pairs, hidden pairs, click on the pinned comment. Join the Smarty Party. You can be my first super Smarty, $25 a month. I'll put your name in every video. All right, let's clean this up. And let's look at what we can do with the sixes. Okay, you notice we had that situation with the two, three, and then with the one, four. Let's notice this two, six right here. Two, six cutting across row nine. 2-6 come down column 8, guess what? This surprising strategy I've been telling you about are these hidden pairs. You, you just add so much. Uh, you can use the word girth if you want because we can limit cells now with these hidden pairs. I see them all the time in these minimum digit Sudokus. You didn't know the minimum amount of digits you can put in a Sudoku uh, for a valid solution is 17. It's been proven mathematically. So these hidden pairs really help us out as we can make more solves. Because now with these sixes, acts as a pointing pair. And this six, there's only one place to put a six up here in block three. So we can solve our green cell for a six. And now we got to work our way towards the red cell. Okay, with this six and this six, we have another pointing pair of sixes. I told you there's going to be another surprising strategy to use right here. It's not really the hidden pairs, but the hidden pairs are going to help us so much but this six is right here our pointing pair and this six there's only one place to put a six in block four okay and if we look down this column now we have a one two three four five six we need a seven eight nine well the seven covers these two squares this has to be your seven which gives us an eight nine right here and limits these two squares to a one five naked pair some of you may have seen that this one five came down and this was a hidden pair to start with Awesome job if you did that. You're getting really good at Sudoku solving. I kind of saw it the other way with the 8, 9, and leaving the 1, 5 right there. But all this is going to help us out. Okay, let's not forget what we did with these 6s. You got two 6s here, two possibilities. I'll put the Snyder 6s. We want to keep making restrictions in this puzzle. And now with this 7 coming up, we're going to use this hidden pair to help us out. Because the 7 can only be in one spot now, right? Because the 2, 3 take up these two spots. And then with these two sevens, hidden pair taking up these two spots, there's only one place to put a seven in block nine. Okay, nice. And now, after solving that, we can look up here in block three, this seven, this seven, We've got a pointing pair of sevens in block three. And then that leads us with just these two sevens here in block six. Let's look at the eights. What's interesting about the eights is this hidden pair is going to help us again. An eight can't be here anymore. It's got to be in one of these three cells. So pointing triple, I'm not going to mark it. But what it does is it says that we can't put an eight here. If we put an eight here, no place to put an eight in block nine. So this has to be a nine, and that's got to be eight. We're going to disambiguate those two cells. And then we look up here. You'll see this one, five, two, three, take up those squares. Six, seven, we have a four, eight, nine. And since the four can only be in one of these cells, it can only be here, we can solve that right away because of that claiming pair. We'll leave the one right there. We know this has to be an eight, nine. So very helpful finding that claiming pair. And this leaves us with a one, five, six right here. That can't be a six, and this can't be a one. We'll get back to those. We got a 489 here. We're getting close to that red cell now. We know that this can't be a 4. So is it an 8 or an a 9? We're about to find out. Because we're going to look at this six, 9 right here. You look at this 9, it cuts up all 9. And because this hidden pair, 9 is going to only be in two spots here in block 6. And they're a pointing pair, right? Because they're in the same row within the block. So 9s cannot be anywhere else along row 5. You try to put a 9 here. No place to put a nine in block six. So 
So we know this cannot be a nine anymore because of the pointing pair. And so this is our second strategy that I find all the time in these minimum digit Sudokus is the pointing pair. The hidden pair is going to really help you out by getting just taking care of two cells so you can focus on other restrictions. Pointing pairs come in handy time and time again. I see seen all of the puzzles that I solve seem that use a pointing pair as well. And if you find value in what I've just showed you, tip me a coffee or just click on the super thanks within YouTube. I really appreciate it. This is going to allow us to put an eight right here. And we're not done. We've got plenty of solving to go, but we're making so much great progress. Hang in there. What we can do now is look across row eight. Where can a three be in row eight? Can't be here because of this three. Can't be here because of the hidden pair. Can't be here because of this three. And it can't be here because of this three. So this has to be a three right there. Okay. And then with these two threes and these two threes, we can solve for three right here. And then we just have two possibilities for a three down here in block nine. Okay. Let's look at the twos now. Okay. You got two coming down here. You have this two cutting across. We have a pointing pair of twos in block eight. So we have a pointing pair. We can disambiguate this hidden pair. That's got to be a six, and that's got to be a two now. Awesome. And then with this six and this six, we can solve for six right here. And we can displace that Snyder mark and solve for six up here in block five. And then with these two sixes and this six, and the fact we just put that three there, we can solve for six up here in block two, which is going to displace that Snyder six there, allows us to solve for six. And we just have the one five naked pair. We got took care of all of the sixes. Let's look at the sevens now. We got this seven and this seven. We have another pointing pair of sevens in block two. With these pointing pair of sevens and this seven, we can solve for seven right here, displacing that Snyder seven and solving this cell for a seven. Okay, after doing that, let's switch to row five. Whenever you have five possibilities already marked and you got enough restriction to look and see if you can solve the rest of it. Where can a two go? Two can't be in these two spots. Can't be here because of this two. This is the only place for a two. It's ambiguating the two, three over here. And now with the threes, three can't be here and it can't be here. So this has to be a three displacing that nine and allow us to solve the last digit as a five. Learn how to solve single cells even quicker with this tutorial. And now we can look down column nine. Okay, with this three, displace that Snyder and solve for the three right here in the corner. Nice job. And with this five, that means this has to be a five and that's gonna be an eight. And this eight and this eight means we can solve this cell for an eight. Means eight's gotta be in one of these spots, giving us another hidden pair. All right, let's see what we can do with this hidden pair. Also give us a mini X-wing. The eight's gotta be in rows one and two in blocks one and two. So the eight's gotta be here in row three and block three, right? You could also look and go, okay, the eights can't be in any of these spots or that spot, however you wanna see it. But this eight and this eight gives us an eight right here. Remember these ones and fours, these act as a pointing pair. So where can the one go in block nine? Only right there, means this has to be a five. And now this one's gonna allow us to disambiguate the five one right there. With these two ones, we can solve for a one right here. Okay, looking really good. And now this one can't be here. A one can't be there. This has got to be the one in block six. And so that's got to be a four. It's ambiguating the nine and a four right here. Only place for a nine and a row four is right there. And now we're looking for a one and a two. I got my two here. So this has got to be a two. That's got to be the one. This place that nine or two, solve this cell for a two. And we know with this hidden pair, and these other digits filled out, we can solve this cell with certainty for a nine, which means this has to be a five. I don't see a five up in block two. The only place to put it now is right here. It's ambiguating that five, one in block one. Okay, it looks like we need a nine to finish row three. Looking good. And then we need a one seven here. I got my one. I'm gonna pull over from block three. So that's a one, that's a seven. I remember I put Snyder seven over here. So we displace that seven and solve for a seven right there. We got a full house. I don't see a nine yet. So there's my nine in row two. That's gotta be an eight. That's gotta be a nine displacing and disambiguating the four eight in block two. And now with this four, we know that cell's gotta be a four. 
and our last digit is a five. See if you can spot the hidden and pointing pairs in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.